afternoon, Internet Athletes. So, and as always, I hope this finds you well. Today we're taking another look at playing with Steve Ray Vaughan and um, we're finishing off transcribing through the Couldn't Stand the Weather album. Uh, this is largely the second half of it. Um, I am in standard tuning today. Which I know is kind of SRV heresy, uh, but I figured that the convenience aspect would probably outweigh the authenticity aspect. Okay, so let's get stuck into this then. Um, as usual, all the tabs for these are going to be in the blog. I will throw a link in the description below. So I'm not going to labour on trying to describe every aspect of fingering. Um, just pop over to the, the, uh, the blog to check out the tabs on that one. Um, so this first one, then, this is taken from Tin Pan Alley, the roughest place in town. Um, and this is featuring mainly, this is a C minor blues. And we're using largely the C blue scale for this one. Um, so here we are up to speed. <laughs> There's this. That is a very, very common position shift, which is not, well, in a Stevie's playing, which is not something that most people tend to do. Generally, coming from position two minor pentatonic, most people will choose to follow the outline of the D minor shape chord and do their slide down there on the G string, fifth to fourth to minor third. Stevie doesn't. So we're coming flat third into a root, pulled off to flat seven slide back to fifth and that's how he navigates his way from position two back to position one and then there's a lot of this type of stuff uh, which is very much making this sort of phrase the subject of the lick if you like and I find with this type of thing, there's a lot of Steve kind of making the point. Making his point kind of over and over again. Saying the same thing and then sort of repeating himself, saying to his, his listener, do you understand me? Do you understand me? It's a little bit of a nebulous concept, but I find that sometimes applying the laws of speech to your playing can um, make it that a little bit more lyrical, make it that a little bit more storytelling. And there's a very common SRV-ism here as well, which is the finger roll here. So 11th fret on the B, that's your flat 7. Roll over to the 11th fret on the G, that's flat 5 from the blue scale. Slip back to the 4th, pull off the flat 3rd, and then down to the root. So slowly. flat five on that little run down at the end there and then four up speed and you'll hear again a lot of that stuff is, is all over stevie slow blues playing particularly noticeable is uh, little wing if you link back to the video i did 21 um, there's some very similar stuff in there using the open e minor slash g major pentatonic scale Okay, moving on then. So this one here, this is Stevie in full-on pentatonic triplet mode. We're in the key of E minor, using E minor pentatonic. And this is basically Stevie's take on our magic three notes. So, with all of that attitude, this is all about dynamics. This is not really a melodic lick as such. So he's keeping his first finger down, 12th fret on the B string, and basically everything's happening around that. And what's interesting is he's using the bends around, keeping that triplet rhythm, one and two and three. So you're kind of filling up the first two beats, then three beats, then four beats are gradually intensifying. And that's really what you want to take away from this. So it's 
gradually building up the intensity, building that sense of momentum through the lick. And that's a really, really cool idea. Um, dialing in a little bit of space at the beginning of your solo gives you somewhere to go as you start working your way through it. Okay, moving on again, and we're this is in full-on double stop mode, so this is the kind of thing that actually you would have seen in first single, first single, come on brain. Uh, nope, it's gone. Never mind. <laughs> I'm sure somebody can put that in the comments. Um, so full on double stops, and again we're using triplets here, and again watch Stevie's pattern here. So we've got... Oops, sorry, the wrong last note, that should have been... So, here uh, we are using the E and the G, so root and minor third of the one chord. Then we move up to the... A minor, we're playing an A and a C, so again, root minor third. Then we get into the five chord, and he kind of ups the ante a little bit here by playing half bars. B and D, so root and flat third of the five chord. And then we're up onto the E and the G here. Before playing. So that's one. sell those last notes because of the bronzo. Uh, that last note there, 17th fret on the B string, that is your root note, your E. Again, very dynamic. Um, all about building that intensity. Uh, let's not forget, of course, that we were still largely a three-piece at the time, so keeping those sort of double-stop ideas is a great way of maintaining dynamics if you're playing in a three-piece. <coughs> um, in between single note lead playing and, uh, and, and rhythm playing, you can play with little mini chord ideas. Okay, final lick. Oh, that went quite nice. And this one here. Uh, this is taken Come On Part 3. So I cut that up at the end. There we go. Now this should be played with a wire pedal. Uh, unfortunately, my wire pedal had an interesting encounter with a power surge a month or so back and is currently fried. Um, hmm, long story there. Uh, so, we'll just have to do it au naturel. Now, this is all, again, E minor pentatonic. So, pretty sound phrase kick things off. Now, what's interesting is the open string pedal tone idea that Stevie's playing. So, he's playing a three-note pattern. 15th fret on the high E, pull off to the open E, then the, high, the open high E strike again. So, a three-note pattern, but he's not playing a triplet rhythm. That would be. He's playing a 16th note, um, semi quaver pattern, so that's four to the beat. And this is giving us an effect called a hemiola. Um, essentially, what's happening is because you're playing a three note melodic pattern within a four note rhythmic pattern, the high note falls on a different part of the beat each time. One, And uh, even for somebody like Steve Ray Vaughan, let's could occasionally be more. Um, so we put that in there. So we've got our little lead in front, and then we've got three whole bars of this pull off idea again. Jazz up a little bit with a wire pedal on the original recording, and then he develops the idea just briefly. And there you're pulling off 15th fret to high E, and then the same idea on the B string, and this is just straight up 16th. One, two, and then you've got a little bend. Hold tone, G up to A, so flat third up to fourth. 
and then quarter turn bend. So in between minor and major third, and then finish on your roof. You're going to find that string muting is very important with that one. What I try and do is use the back of my thumb on the bass side. So if I'm doing a pull off on the B string, for example, I've got the back of my thumb covering the G through to the low E strings, and I'm using the unused third finger on my pick hand to cover the E string. So what I'm doing now, I'm preventing the strings from physically moving and vibrating, therefore obviously they can't make any noise. So we're making a little protective uh, social bubble, if you will, around the, the string that's being struck. You're going to need that because when you do a pull-off, as I'm sure you're all aware, you don't just lift your finger off the string, you actually do a slight bend kind of a flicking motion, so the finger doing the pull-off briefly becomes a finger picking the string. That means that you haven't got anything muting that high E string, you can actually crash into it and have a whole world of string noise going on. So it's worth taking a little bit of time, making sure that your muting technique is good and clean now. As guitarists deal with those insufferable people who insist that tone is all in the fingers, lovey. Um, yeah, unfortunately they are right, and this is this is what they mean really. Getting your synchronization between pick and fret hand muting sorted out will do absolute wonders for your tone, and best of all, in a cost of living crisis, it's free. Um, so I will leave you with that played first uh, slowly. <laughs> And now more akin to Stevie Speed. And with that, I shall leave you. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Please do uh, like, share, and subscribe. Click the little notification bell, although I'm told it doesn't work, but it's there. And um, I will hopefully see you next month as we dive into Jimi Hendrix. Uh, right, and that's it. <laughs> All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. See you soon.